Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is a new enhanced input action mapping system inside of Unreal Engine 5.1 and beyond. So as you may have noticed if you've updated Unreal Engine 5.1 the normal action mappings and axis mappings and all that are now deprecated and they've been replaced with a new enhanced input action system. Now this can be a little bit confusing just to wrap your head around but once you do understand it you'll notice this is actually very very powerful and a lot better than the old system which is why we're going to be going over how to use it today. Now today I'm just going to be creating a very basic system of creating a flashlight using this. Now all I'm doing is turning a light on and off just to show you how these action mappings work. So if I just hit play we can see that by holding F I'm going to turn it on, releasing F I'm going to let go, I'm going to turn it off again sorry, so I'm going to just turn it on and off like this. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to show you the old version versus the new version. So if you go to edit, project settings, if you go down to input, this is obviously where it used to be. So we have our action mappings and axis mappings. You can still add these and I believe they do probably still work, but obviously they're not the good versions to use anymore. So you'll notice here it says axes and action mappings are now deprecated. Please use enhanced input actions and input mapping context instead. Now in the engine we also now have enhanced input here. This isn't what we're going to be using however you notice we have all these different like we have all the different platforms here but this isn't where we do it. We don't do it in the project settings anymore. So we're going to close that. I just wanted to show you that quick thing. What we're going to do is open up our content browser. I've created a new folder called input so I'm just going to put it in here and we're going to right click go to input in here so we have input and we're going to create an input action. So I'm going to name this IA for input action then underscore flashlight as this is what I would name my action mapping I would just call it flashlight so I'm putting IA for input action then flashlight. Then we're going to open that up straight away. Now this may look fairly similar to before. So before when you created an action mapping and got it inside of your event graph and your blueprint, if you were to select it, you may get something that looks like this come up on the right hand side. So consume input, we can obviously see if it consumes the input, so nothing else would work with this, or if we want it to trigger and pause, resolve all mappings, all this great stuff, we do that inside of this blueprint instead. We can also change the value type, so it's a boolean, float, vector 2D or vector. I'm just going to leave it as a digital ball for the moment, for this one, as I don't need to worry about it. And the triggers and modifiers I'm also not going to add on here. Obviously you can add one and see what these are. So you've got corded action, combo, down, hold, hold and release. And if you were to hover over these, you get all these different descriptions of what they do as well. So hold and release, trigger fires when input is released after having been actuated for at least hold time threshold seconds. So basically what all of this means is before if we wanted to do custom things with our input actions, we had to do it ourselves. So if we wanted to something to happen when holding it down, we'd have to set that up ourselves using delays and loops and all that stuff. But now we can just do it with hold. This basically means it's going to be able to do it for us so we don't need to do everything ourselves which is why it's a much better system. And the same with modifiers you can click on it, hover over these to see them all again like this. But for me this is just all going to be fine by default. Then we're going to save that and close it. The next thing we want to do is go back to our content browser, right click, go back to input and create an input mapping context. So we've created a layer input action now we need our input mapping, so we can actually map to that input. So we're going to create that, and I'm just going to name this My Game Input Mapping, or I am, and then the name of your game, or whatever it is that you want to do. And we're going to open that up straight away. Now this should also look fairly familiar, because this should now just look like your edit project settings input that we had before. So if you to press Add Action Mapping, again, this is where it looks similar. So you can choose what it's going to be. So instead of naming it here, you choose your input action. So we've got flashlight and then you just choose the key you want. Or I can press this here and then press F as I want it to be on the F key for flashlight. And you can again do triggers and modifiers in here. Is player mappable? So if true, then this action key mapping will be exposed as a player mappable key. Basically meaning the player can change it so the player can map it. And obviously if you tick that, then you have access to the options for it. But I'm not going to be going over that in this video, however I will probably make a video on that in the future, it's just obviously something more advanced, so we don't need to do it in this video right now. But again, that's all we need to do. So we've got our input action, and we've got the key we're going to use to fire off that input action. So we're going to save this, and close it. 
And I should say all of this is also the same if you're doing axes mappings. You'd obviously just, if I had to open the input action here, instead of the value type being digital, you'd use axes 1D float. So then you can obviously use one and minus one to go forwards and backwards like we used to before. But again, today's video, I'm just doing a flashlight with an action mapping, not an axes mapping. But it's very, very similar. So we're gonna close those and now we're gonna open up our player blueprint to actually use this action mapping. So obviously it doesn't have to be your player blueprint but that's where it's gonna be for me as it's a flashlight. So in here you might have noticed this is a little bit different as well as obviously they're now using the new enhanced system. So what they're doing for the camera input is you can see here this is what they're gonna look like but we're gonna go over it more soon. So you've got left, right, up, down and you'll notice all of this just looks a lot cleaner and a lot more efficient and it's just better connected and it runs a lot better and obviously we have more options and control over it all as well so on event begin play what they're doing is they're adding the input mapping so they're casting to the player controller to get the correct player controller then getting that enhanced input local player subsystem and then they're adding the mapping context to that so essentially what we're doing is just apping the mapping context to the player controllers enhanced input subsystem and the enhanced input subsystem is again a part of this new enhanced input mappings that we need to be able to use. Now you'll notice again they've already added one on here, however you can have multiple mapping contexts for one local subsystem. So I'm going to be doing that as well just to show you. So if I have to come out of the enhanced input local player subsystem, or what I'm going to do is just come out of this root node, I can then do add mapping context once again like they've got. I'm just going to connect that into the end here. So it's going to be fired off of event begin play as well when the rest of this code is doing it. If you don't add in the mapping context, you're obviously not going to be able to use your input actions. It's just not going to work. It won't fire off as you haven't specified the player can actually use those input actions. The mapping context is obviously going to be the one we just created, which I named mind game input mapping. Obviously IMC default is the one they are using. So you may want to just use that one as well. So it's all in one like so. So we're going to select that, we'll compile and save that. And now what we can do is if we find some empty space, we can right click and search for our input action. So I need mine IA flashlight. You'll notice we now have the IA flashlight under the enhanced action events. Now again, you'll notice we've got lots of different values on here. It just makes it a lot more efficient. So I'm going to be going over what these are. So started is essentially pressed and completed is essentially released. So those are the main two you're going to need. Started and completed are pressed and released. So if I were to just get a print string on these, we've got pressed. And then if I were to do that on completed as well, we'll get released. And this is also how I found out what they will do. I just put print strings on, press the button, see what they all did and when. So I just then press F, you got pressed, released like so. Working perfectly like this. So if I were to hold it down, press, let go, released. So those are the main two we're gonna need. Triggered is essentially gonna be firing off when you're holding it down. So if I were to get print string here and get hold or held, what we're gonna do, hold it down, it's gonna be saying hold like so. That's just gonna be firing off throughout the duration that we are holding down the button, which again is a much better way of doing hold down input actions instead of how we used to be able to do it before. Now ongoing and canceled offer something different. If you hover over it, it says triggering is still being processed and triggering has been canceled. So this, I believe, is for when you add in different triggers and modifiers in the actual input action itself. That's what these are going to be used for. And obviously the elapsed seconds, triggered settings, and input action, obviously pretty self-explanatory as well. Again, if you hover over all of these, you get more details too. But we're just going to be creating a basic flashlight, like I say. So we're going to need pressed and released, or I should now say we're going to need started and completed. What I'm going to do first is just go to my viewport and obviously add in a quick spotlight. So we actually have a quick flashlight here, putting the intensity all the way up just so we can see it in this bright level. If I to drag this in, what we can then do is add this set visibility, putting that into started. So when we hold it down, it's going to be new visibility. And then off of completed, we're going to set visibility again. Off of completed, like I say, setting it to false. So when we then let go, we're going to be setting it back to false. So turning the light off. So when we press it, we're turning on. When we release it, we're turning it off. Now obviously if you want to do a flip-flop, so you toggle it on and off, you just get a flip-flop out of started, so out of pressed. So again, it's very, very, very similar to how we used to do it before. It's just some of the names have changed and we've just got more details and more control over it as well. 
kind of similar to how they changed up the animation retargeting system. It's very similar. We just now have more control over it and we can do a lot more stuff. It's a lot more efficient and it's just better all around. So what I also need to do is make sure that my flashlight is off by default. So I search visibility like so. Now if we compile and save this, what we see is if we to test this out, hold down F, our flashlight's on, release F, it's turned off again. So we now have our own input action mapping fully set up and working. So we have our flashlight system like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've gone over setting up our own input action mappings and our mapping context for the new enhanced input mapping system with Unreal Engine 5.1 and later. And doing this, we've just created a very basic flashlight system just to turn it on and off, but we've just done that to show how the input actions now work. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.